Time to take a closer look at some basics again, namely on how underwater explosions damaged surface ships and submarines, because there's actually quite a difference. Now an underwater explosion has a different characteristic to regular air explosion due to the water being a rather dense medium in comparison to air. When an explosion underwater happens, it creates a cavity of high pressure gas that pushes the water outwards. This bubble is created by gas generated from the explosion. Additionally, the size of the bubble is increased by the water that is vaporized due to the heat. Now the energy of the blast expands the bubble, yet beyond the point of an equilibrium between the bubble and the outer water pressure. The inertia of water causes the bubble to overshoot the point at which its internal pressure is equal to the external pressure of the water. The bubble then becomes rarefied, which means being less dense, and its radial motion is brought to rest. Yet again, there is no equilibrium achieved and the bubble is contracted more than the remaining energy. Thus it expands again and the process repeats itself. Although it should be noted that almost 90% of the energy is dissipated after the first expansion and contraction. This expansion and contraction is the reason why underwater explosions appear to be followed by other explosions. So in short, we have two phenomena according to the US Army Material Command. The effects of an underwater explosion are separable into two distinct phenomena, the shockwave and the pulsation of the bubble. Note that I watched some YouTube videos on underwater explosions and in those the bubble basically disperses after the first contraction. Yet those explosions were filmed in small fish tanks and done with firecrackers near the surface. So I'm not sure how comparable these are to specialized warheads in larger depths. Now what are some differences of an underwater explosion to explosion in the air? In both air and water there is a rapid rise in overpressure at the shock front. Yet in an air explosion this overpressure drops rapidly. This doesn't happen under water. Hence the peak values in water are much higher than those at the same distance from equal explosion in air. Next, the velocity of sound in water is almost 5 times higher than in the air, thus the shock wave passes by more rapidly. This in combination with the drag force of the water means that the affected objects will only be moved for a very limited degree. Another aspect is that the presence of upper and lower boundaries, namely the surface and the ocean floor, cause the shock to have a complex wave pattern. One of the most dangerous short distance explosions is an explosion of bottom mimes in shallow water regions. The pressure wave reverberating from the bottom considerably intensifies ship destruction. Furthermore, additional shock waves are produced by the pulsation of the bubble itself. Now, let's talk about a very important aspect namely effectiveness. Thus it is important to remember that in order to be the most effective underwater warheads utilize the interaction of steam void created by the explosion with the hull of the target. There are two distinct cases, surface and submerged bodies. So let's take a closer look at those, you know, for effectiveness. You probably heard before that explosions underwater are more damaging if they happen under the ship. And well, there's a good reason for this. If a warhead detonates under the ship, the bubble lifts the keel up to a certain degree, or at least it displaces the water from that area. This means that this area is providing less buoyancy due to the lack of water, whereas the bow and stern are still supported. Thus the keel is stressed in the midsection besides the shockwave itself. As a result, when the bubble contracts, the ship basically falls into a hole in the water, while the bow and stern are still supported by water. In other words, the back of the ship is broken while it collapses under its own weight. The largest destruction occurs as a result of explosions underneath the keel, amidships. Explosions in the vicinity of the bow or stern usually don't cause the vessel to sink. Additionally, remember that the bubble will expand and contract several times. Thus the ship may be destroyed during the subsequent oscillations, even if it manages to survive the first. Yet this phenomenon only works rather close to the surface, since the further underwater the increased pressure and buoyancy of the surrounding water limits the effect of a beneath the keel explosion. Luckily, unless you are a target, there's another effect that is suited for submerged vessels. Under some circumstances, the migration of the bubble due to the hydrodynamic and gravitational effects can result in highly concentrated transfer of this momentum to the ships or other structures so that the bubble action can outweigh that of the shock wave in its damaging effects. Now let's look how this would work out. Here we have our submarine and here's the explosion. Now if the expanding and contracting steam bubble touches the hull, it attaches to it. 
Since the bubble is oscillating, it will cause cyclic stress on the hull, which might be enough to damage it, which is rather unpleasant a few hundred meters below the surface. To summarize, an underwater explosion creates a pulsating bubble, which can put continuous stress on a target and might damage it over time, even if the initial shock wave was survived. Surface targets are ideally attacked with beneath the keel explosions, which allow to exploit the target's weight against it by creating a void beneath it, and thus break the target's back under its own weight. This method although doesn't work for submerged targets, yet an exploding bubble attaches itself to the hull once it gets in contact with it, and the cyclic stress from the expanding and contracting bubble can damage the hull. Now a big thank you to my patrons here, without your generous support the latest videos wouldn't have been possible. Remember, every single dollar helps. Also a big thank you to Harald for proofreading the script. If you are interested in naval stuff, check out those videos, or maybe you want to know more about how water works, then look at this video. Anyway, sources are in the description, thank you for watching and see you next time.